This parts caster was coming along okay until a problem became apparent. The fingerboard extension is so high above the pick guard you can easily fit a popsicle stick under it. That's almost 80 thousandths of an inch. Removing the neck, we can see the problem is even worse. The neck pocket isn't only too thick, but extremely uneven. This not only doesn't look good, but is a setup disaster. Even with the saddles adjusted to their highest possible position, the strings will be flat against the fingerboard. The neck is sitting way, way too high in that pocket. So how do you fix this? That neck pocket has to come down a lot, and it has to be flat. That's a job for a router with a guide bearing bit, with one caveat. The neck pocket edges are extremely delicate, and the finish is prone to chipping, so a trim or full-sized router is out of the question. Ideally, we'd use a Dremel. And that's exactly why I designed this router base plate to attach to the Stumac Plunge Router Base, which is made for a Dremel. My neck pocket routing base plate uses two 832 by quarter inch machine screws to attach to the Plunge Router Base. The screws came with my Stumac sound hole routing jig, which I've used for routing neck pockets for a long time. It'll work great for this job, but the base plate I made is a bit more user friendly. You can find a link to my original video describing this process in the description box. With some RAM board cut to size to protect the guitar and for the router base to ride on, let's look at why this router base works. The base is circular and has a handle attached to the back end for a solid, stable grip, which is extremely important. You do not want the router tipping forward. You want it completely flat and stable the entire time, and for that, we're going to need it firmly planted on the body. It has to be big enough to be in solid contact with the body while at the outer edges of the neck pocket. The base plate is 6 inches in diameter, which is enough to meet those demands comfortably. The router bit is my faithful 47223S guide bearing router bit from Amana Tool, which has a quarter inch diameter by quarter inch height cutter and an eighth inch shank. This little bit is an absolute home run for so many precision routing jobs, I can't recommend it highly enough. Most importantly, it's a guide bearing bit that fits in a Dremel, which gives us the absolute finest control over the entire job with the least risk of chipping the finish. Speaking of which, preparation is still important. I'll use a small file to soften the edges of the neck pocket, beveling them slightly so the finish will be less likely to chip during routing. Be sure to file only with push strokes toward the body. Just to be on the safe side, I'll also use some masking tape around the neck pocket just under the area I intend to route. That way, if a chip does come out, there's a chance it'll get trapped by the masking tape, or at least prevent a bigger chip from coming out, which will make touching up the area easier. If you can find the chip that comes out, you can carefully super glue it back into place, then wet sand and buff, and if you're lucky, nobody will ever know the difference. With delicate work like this, you always have to think ahead and be prepared for the worst case scenario. Precautions out of the way, it's time to bite the bullet and start routing. I've done this dozens of times, but it still makes me nervous. Just think of that nervousness as your body preparing you to pay very close and careful attention to what you're about to do. Go slow and steady, but above all, keep the router flat. I do this with my jig by gripping the handle and pressing down on the base behind the Dremel and very gently stabilizing or even pushing slightly upwards on the body of the Dremel itself in the front. Remember, the worst thing that happens if you don't have the router low enough is you don't cut low enough or cut at all. The worst thing that happens if you have the router too low is you completely ruin whatever you're working on. Your number one priority is always to never let the router tip forward and go deeper into your workpiece than you intend to. After routing everything as cleanly as possible, I'll put some sticky back sandpaper on the back of the neck plate and use that as a sanding block just to smooth everything out and catch any stray wood fibers. This neck was also feeling dangerously tight in the pocket, so I'll also use some sticky back sandpaper on my Woodpecker Mini Square and use that as a sanding block on the sides of the neck pocket. I want to sand just enough that I have a little more leeway with the fit of the neck. I don't want to worry that putting the neck in and taking it back out is going to chip or crack the finish. Before putting the neck back on, I'll also take the opportunity to clear the neck pocket holes. As I've described in one of my older videos, which I provided a link to in the description box, Clearing the neck pocket holes is absolutely essential and is woodworking 101 for joints connected with wood screws. The screw should only thread into the second workpiece, pulling the second workpiece into the first workpiece. If the wood screws thread into both workpieces, a tight, accurate joint is physically impossible. If you're not clearing the holes on the body on a bolt-on guitar, you're doing it wrong, you have a bad joint, and you need to correct it if you want to have any hope of the neck sitting in the pocket the way it was designed to. With that out of the way, I'll put the neck back on and see where everything lines up. 
There's a little more gap than I'd like above the pick guard, and the left side of the neck heel is sticking up a bit above the neck pocket. It's not horrendous, but it isn't great, so I'm going to take the neck back off and see what's going on. The neck pocket looks okay, even though it needs to come down a little more. So why was it uneven? I checked the heel of the neck and found the culprit. The neck heel itself is uneven. I reattached it to the body, then used a fine tip sharpie marker to draw a line on the heel of the neck right where it meets the neck pocket. Then I carefully used a sanding block to sand the neck heel flat right to that sharpie line. With thick poly finishes, you can always wet sand and buff if you accidentally scuff anything, but be as careful as possible. Sharpie marker will wipe off of polyurethane very quickly and easily with isopropyl alcohol. Off it comes, and then, after I've routed the neck pocket down a second time, I'll put the neck back on. This time, it's perfect. There's just enough clearance to slip the pick guard on underneath the fingerboard extension when the neck is attached to the body. Everything fits tightly and cleanly, and the neck is sitting dead flat in the pocket. The loaded single-ply pick guard is a perfect fit, which is a huge relief considering I didn't measure anything at all. I just cut the neck pocket depth by complete guesstimation using a three-ply pick guard as a reference. The before and after is truly impressive and goes to show how important a well-cut neck pocket is. Problems with the neck pocket appear far more often than you'd think, and it's a rare day that I don't have to at least clear the neck pocket holes and do a little cleanup, even if I don't have to break out the Dremel and my custom base plate every single time. So watch out for those bolt-on neck pockets, and if you get stuck, come back for tips and tricks you're not going to find anywhere else. Right here on GuitarMD.